guys, welcome back to part two of this episode. If you haven't checked out part one, it's got all of my finished objects, all of my works in progress. Um, so definitely check that out. This video is exclusively all about the fun stuff that I got during my trip um, to Maryland. So if you don't want to spend money <laughs> on anything, if you don't want to feel like you're enabled, if you don't like looking at pretty yarn, and you don't like nerdy stuff, you're not going to like this video. But if you're into all of those things, then welcome, 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 welcome. So, okay. Long story short. I spent two weeks in Maryland, which is where I am originally from. Um, I love going back to Maryland. It's my recharge. I feel at home there. I feel completely myself. I don't feel like a piece of, of me is missing. I don't have to fight anything while I'm out there. I'm just very like zen and whole. <laughs> So that being said, when I am zen and whole, I like to visit my favorite spots. Now my favorite spots are everything. My old elementary school, my old house, my old neighborhood. I've gotta go to my old grocery store, it makes me happy. Um, and there's a couple of different spots that I go where I actually spend money <laughs> and places where I didn't spend money but totally had a blast and I will have video for all of this little snippets here and there of the trip so without further ado um I'm not going in order because I can't remember what day I did what I just have this huge pile of stuff um, and I'm just gonna go through it um, some of this stuff is together and some of it's not and it's total mishmash okay so first things first is I did if you watched the first part of this video you saw um, one of the baby vertebrae that I got done and I made that with Plymouth Encore and made with like an oatmeal-y type color and I got a second skein of the Plymouth Encore um, while I was there at the Yarn Maven in Smyrna, Delaware. Um, I love this shop and every time I go in, well first off, this shop has been through hell and back, let me tell you. They were at one location, then they moved to another location. Then a car decided to ram into their existing location, and then they had to move to a third location. Oh my god, you guys. So this third location where they're at now is gorgeous. They have a great stock of yarn, beautiful yarns. Um, I just decided I was going to get this, just kind of spur of the moment, because I couldn't figure anything out in my head what I wanted but I definitely wanted this for a baby vertebrae um, or maybe some baby hats or something of the like um, because deep dark purple is my jam uh, I love deep dark purple um, so I will do something with this I'm not sure what I might do some charity hats with it we'll see um, so there's that so that was I got two skeins, so I got this one and I got the oatmeal at Yarn Maven. So I'm gonna put this down somewhere. <laughs> um, another yarn shop I went to was this one down here, because I can't remember off the top of my head the name of it. But I go there every single time I'm in Maryland because they are right next to a cross stitch place, which I will get to in a minute. <laughs> um, I like their selection there as well. Um, I made a list of, and this is, I always recommend this to people when you're going on a vacation and you know you're going to yarn stores, um, make a list of things that you need to buy for. So there are certain things, I really wanted to buy sweater quantities of yarn, that did not happen, it did not happen this trip. Um, mm -hmm. Just because I had, I was doing literally everything else and spending all of my money doing everything else so I could not buy sweater quantities of yarn. Which is okay. It's okay because honestly, I used my money for better things in, in the long run. Um, but that being said, I did add to the collection of yarn. <laughs> so 
This, while not a sweater quantity, will be used for a sweater. This is Shepherd's Wool um, in the Michigan Blue colorway, which is very apparent why it's called Michigan Blue. There is a sweater pattern down here. Again, I cannot remember it off the top of my head. Um, it has crabs on it and waves. And I, as a Marylander, need that in my life. So I decided I was going to find a nice Maryland blue crab blue for my sweater. Um, because, pro tip, crabs don't come red. They come blue. And then you boil them. No, you don't boil them, first off. You steam them, and then they turn red. Like my shirt. <laughs> um, so I wanted to get a nice blue, a live crab color. And while this is not representative of the blue crab color, I'll show you some more better representation later. Um, it called to me. So I was like, I really like it. I like it. I'm going to use it. Um, and yes, the dye lots match. I made double sure. Um, so this will eventually be used for that sweater. Um, I need to buy obviously more colors to go with that um, and yeah I'm super excited it's squishy and soft and I love it it's 100% wool uh, worsted spun fine wool and I'm excited I don't think it says what kind of wool it is it's probably a bunch of sheeps bunch of sheeps it feels nice so there's that then of course of course queen, queen, self-proclaimed queen of finding sock yarn I do not need, right? Right? If you suffer from this addiction as well, be sure to subscribe to this channel <laughs> um, because you will be in good company. So I ended up finding this by Opal, one of my favorite German sock company, or German yarn sock, sock yarn company. German Sock Yarn Company. Gee Louise. Okay. Opal. <laughs> this is the cutest damn thing. Okay. I had to have it. I had to have it just for the damn label. Um, first off. First off. Okay. <laughs> first off. Do you see these sheep? They are, um having fun with balloons because uh it is the birthday party the Geburtstag party are you kidding me the sheep are having a birthday party sold 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 so i had to have it <laughs> because the sheep are having a birthday party uh they're 10 year they're celebrating 10 years of something their 10 year birthday party i guess um so yeah, this is uh, color number 9605. I'm going to cover how much I paid for it and show you, whoa, a little bit of a representation of what it's going to look like when it's done. Yeah, I need to find a really good sock yarn pattern for this. Um, you know, obviously it's going to be a little bit vanilla because you can't get rid of the stripes, but I want to find something pretty pretty cool for this one um, just because I feel like the sheep are cool so we're gonna have to find a cool pattern it's just how it goes um, so yeah more German sock yarn acquired do I get achievement points for that do I get like XP I don't know it's look at it how can I how could I not say how could I not buy it damn you <laughs> Anyway, so then, after going to the yarn store, two doors down, next door, I call it next door, is the stitching post. Um, I can remember them because it's on our label. Um, and I got some cool stuff from there. So, I'm going to start with the coolest thing first and go up from there. Um, this is called... 
Cathedral Woods Goddess by Cor Nora Corbett. Nora Corbett. I cannot speak tonight. Um, I had not seen this design. And this is by Mirabilia. Look at her. I'm trying to get this to focus right. Look at her. I don't know why I'm in love with this, but I love it. So she's very woodsy, goddessy, teal, deer antlers, craziness. I love it. I love, love, love it. Um, probably the only thing I would change is the background. Would probably have to be like a darker brown, like a not not so much of a cream, but maybe a brown more woodsy naturally dyed I don't know something I don't like this background but other than that this this little girl is gorgeous so I had to have her I had no intention of getting a Mirabilia because I have never done a Mirabilia they're all sitting right here um but I had to have it because you never know when these things are going to go out of print and then you're going to have to pay more than you're willing to say on your podcast for them um yeah so there's that had to have it then I still haven't finished my Mill Hill bead crab either if you guys remember that but I had to have these because they're Maryland uh Mill Hill bead buttons and beads buttons spring series buttons and beads spring series uh conch shell and I don't know if you guys, and sorry for the glare, but I don't know if you guys can tell, but the bead, if you can see the beads on there, on the picture, that's kind of what I'm going to be doing with it. Um, so I had to have that one to go with my crab. And then I found this little guy and this is, it's an, it's another, uh, Mill Hill bead kit and he's tiny. This one's small. Um, it is Holiday Flamingo from the Winter Holiday Collection. And his legs, I don't know if you guys can tell. Let me see if I can, there we go. But his legs are these little beady, sorry for the glare again. These little beady parts. And they dangle. They're just little dangly legs. I have no idea how that's going to work. Um... But we'll see, right? I guess I guess I'll find out how to do it later. Um, now, if you're if you're not familiar, Maryland is very well known for certain things, right? Um, violence, <laughs> violence, drugs, um, crabs you know, the Ravens, Baltimore Orioles, um, another big Maryland thing that maybe most people don't know, but if you're in the region, you know, um, is Maryland women are known for, it's called the Hun, right? H-U-N. Um, it's a very stylized, like 1950s housewife, meets giant beehive, meets pink flamingo, weird John Waters weirdness. And I totally embrace the hun lifestyle, even though obviously I'm not rocking the beehive. I am a big lover of pink flamingos because of that. <laughs> For example, I really want a pink flamingo in my lawn, like on my front lawn. Like I would love like 50 of them. I don't know why other than it's a Baltimore thing. So you have to love the pink flamingo. So I'm going to do this and hopefully, hopefully it's not too bad. Look at the they even separated the little knees. Look, the little knee parts are by itself. Oh, man. Oh, man. It's the small joys, right? So, I may cuss up a storm for this one in a podcast coming soon. We shall see. So, there's those. 
I did get another cross stitch. Uh, this one I got from, it's a big box store that we don't have out in the Midwest. It's called AC Moore. And my sister-in-law um, is the manager of that store. My brother was a manager at another store, but he has since got another job. Good for him. Um, and I had to get this one. And home is where you drop your anchor. Real simple. I was actually going to maybe start it on my trip, but decided against it. Um, mostly because it's a smaller piece of fabric and I didn't have a frame for it and I wasn't going to go buy one. Um, it was five bucks. I'm not going to buy a frame. That's probably half the, half the uh, cost of that. So that's not happening. Not happening. Okay. So that's all the crafty, super craft, super, super crafty things, except for maybe one. I have one more crafty thing in here. Um, next is the big pile of geeky stuff. Okay. So another special place I like to go um, is called Third Eye Comics. And I didn't know about this place until my friend Adam, who I've known since second grade, second grade, everyone, um, until he wised me up to it. So every time I go to Third Eye Comics, there, oh, it's, first off, it's fantastic. Huge, huge building. They've got one side that's all comics, comic book related and figurines on one side. Then on the other side, maybe I think it's another like one door down, same size, but it's all board games, card games, that type of thing. Um, I go to both and I end up spending a ton of money because I'm just like awed by all the things. So I have to have all the things. Um, and then anybody who has been watching the podcast for any length of time will know I like coloring books. I especially like the adult coloring books, um, but I'll take whatever I can get, right? So while I was there, getting my nerd on, I ended up getting the Jurassic World coloring book. <laughs> There's dinosaurs! There's dinosaurs in there! Hold on. Uh, there, I gotta find... I gotta find a really good one for you guys. Like, come on, come on, look at it. If you guys haven't seen Jurassic World, uh, or I think this, there's, there's two of them, uh, you really should. Oh, oh, classic, classic, classic. There you go, classic. Jurassic World scene, okay? Love it. Love it, love it, love it. All the, velo all the Velociraptors. Now, there is no Jeff Goldblum in here, I believe. Which is sad. There's no Jeff Goldblum. But, I'll live. Also, um... While Claire looks like Claire Owen, is his, is his name Owen? I can't remember. I think it's Owen. Yeah, it's Owen. Owen does not look like Chris Pratt at all. At all. Like, Claire looks like Claire, okay? Anybody who's seen Jurassic World or It, you know what Claire looks like Claire. That, that does not look like Chris Pratt at all. Okay, that looks like a... I don't know. He looks like a gruffy, angry Kendall. That does not look like Chris Pratt. That would probably be my only complaint. What kind of G.I. Joe shit is this? What kind of G.I. Joe looking shit is this? That does not look like Chris Pratt. I am so sorry. But, I don't care. Because it's got your Velociraptors and Dinosaurs! So... Anyway, total, total nerd. Hi, welcome to the podcast. I am a nerd, if you were unaware. Okay, then, I have to take these out. These are very special, and you'll see why in a minute. Um, 
Then I got one of these. I didn't know about these. Uh, this is Michael Turner's Soul Fire coloring book. This is more on the comic book, adult comic book type um, coloring book situation because girls in bikinis and shit with dragons and fire and what have you. Um, yeah. A little, uh, inappropriate for children and what have you. Um, I mean, kinda, kinda not really. It's not really. Over, okay, let me say. Over-sexualized? Yes, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. But, that being said, sometimes you just want to color a comic book page and you just want to you just want to just chill and not think about every little damn thing like look like look at that ugh it's just disgustingly detailed and i can't wait to dig my little hands on them so highly recommend they had a couple other ones that i really wanted i i passed on um because another reason why was because I didn't really know what I had. I forgot how many I had. So, good problem to have. So, I got two more coloring books for my collection. My collection! <laughs> They'll be great for my collection. Okay, so now, um, kind of flipping the tables a little bit. I'm just kind of going through my stuff as I'm going through my stuff. Um, and this is... While I've been happy geeky, this is a very serious thing for me, so kind of get your mindset. Like, I don't want to, like, flip the tables on you, but I don't want to, like, skirt and have you, like, crash into a depression wall. I'm, I'm kind of embracing, or embracing you for the impact, okay? Um, one of the things that I did while I was out in Maryland, which was really important to me while I was out there, um, one of the reasons I decided to go on this trip was I wanted to go to the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial in Washington DC because my friend, uh, my mentor, um, my teacher, and fellow sheriff's officer when I was a sheriff's officer, um, Robert Coonsey was killed in the line of duty last year. And I, I can tell you a million times over how devastating that was for me. I cry about it all the time, still to this day. Um, Sundays are really hard because that's the day he got killed. Um, but I wanted to go and see his name and pay my respects. And one of the things that I didn't know when I went out there, of course you, and I'll put, I will put pictures up after I'm done talking or whatever. Um, you expect to see the name on the wall, okay? Um, what I didn't expect was the ability to take a rubbing. So if you've ever seen documentaries or anything about the Vietnam War Memorial, you find the name and then a lot of people will put paper on it and make a rubbing of the name and have the name. Um, and I was fortunate enough to go out there and make rubbings um, I've made several, I'm just going to show you one, of his name, and I don't know how well this is going to show up, um, but I have one of these, and I will be getting this framed with his picture, and it will be going up on my wall because he had a huge impact on my life. Um, more so, the, the more I think about it, the more... I realize he did have that sort of impact on me um, and all the things that I know and all the things that I use at my work and all the things that I've learned as a deputy and you know just life in general so I it was really important to me to do that I have two extras um, that I will also be getting framed for other people um, because I have the opportunity and I was fortunate enough to go out there and the people that I will be framing these for did they don't um, and I know that he had an impact on them as well 
So that will be happening sometime soon. Um, and like I said, if you, and if you have not been there, okay, if you've not been to the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial, it is very appropriate. It is tucked away. It is um, quiet and respectful. And if you are ever in Washington, D.C., if you have the chance to go, I highly encourage it. It's just one of those places that you should go and, you know, honor those people that have given their lives for you. Um, I always tell people, you know, if you go to D.C., you, you need to go to the Holocaust Museum and understand your history. You need to go to the war memorials and understand, you know, what that sacrifice meant on a very small scale. And this is just one of those things that I feel like people should do. So this is probably the most important thing I got while I was out there was three little pieces of paper. And I would not, I would trade all of this in a second just to have these three little pieces of paper. So there you go. So I'm going to put these up real quick. I'm going to put these up so they don't get ruined because if these get ruined, I'm going to lose my mind. So I will be right. Okay. I'm back. <laughs> I had to find, I was like, I have to find a safe place for these. That's a problem. Okay. Back on the happy train again. Get yourselves happy. <laughs> ah! Ah! Okay. I'm trying to get all of this sorted, you guys. Okay. Okay. Ah! All right. So another place that I went on my trip that is a super happy place for me, which unfortunately will probably not be the same after this trip. Um, fortunate, I will say fortunately, unfortunately, um, is my old public library. I always go back and I always like sniff the old books and see what they've changed and where the hell are my Nancy Drews and my Fear Street. Like I want to know that my library is doing good and that the kids that are where I'm from are getting their books and stuff. It's just, it's one of those things that like makes me happy. And then one of the cool things about the library is they always have, and just like our library here, is they have a section where you can buy books. Um, old books that nobody is reading or older-ish, or not older-ish, but not as new books uh, that they've taken down. And my dad, growing up, my dad would always go to that section. Like, he wouldn't go to the book books. He would always go to the used books, like the ones that you could buy. And it was like so frustrating to me because I was like, why are you going in there? Those are the crap books. Nobody wants to buy those. And now that I am the age that he was back then, I understand why he's doing that. <laughs> it all comes around. It all comes around. So I got three very cool books. Okay. One of which you guys will very much enjoy. Um, for a dollar ten or maybe a dollar five okay less than two dollars less than two dollars okay for all three of these books which to me is thievery <laughs> I mean I'm just like are you sure that it's a dollar ten or whatever it was and they're like yeah it's fine it's fine yeah I was like Okay, don't mind if I do. Don't mind if I do. So I will go with the most podcast appropriate. I bought this one. Knit to Flatter uh, by Amy Herzog. And it's all about the only instructions you'll ever need to knit sweaters that make you look good and feel great. Well, sold. Sold. Okay. This thing by itself is 25 bucks okay brand new i got it in a set for a dollar ten so always go to your book section and look at your books like yeah it's a little worn out it's a little 
you know, the sun got to it, but the sun didn't get to the inside, and Amy Herzog is one of those knitting goddesses that can do no wrong, so you just buy the book and you just go with it. Um, so yeah, that's why. Oh, I totally skipped this part, by the way. So the fortunately, unfortunately, that I totally skipped over was my library is totally getting revamped. Um, they're going to gut the inside and make it more modern and wonderful and pretty and more accessible, which is great, but it breaks my heart at the same time because it's not going to be my, my library anymore. Um, so yeah, I totally skipped that part. But anyway, so knit the flare. Then, and then, and then, and then, because I don't just knit, read knitting books, okay? I read basically everything I can get my hands on. Um, I always try to find some Maryland books in Maryland, like Maryland history, because um, you can't find it here in Kansas. And I'm more interested in that than Kansas history. I'm sorry not into pioneers and Wyatt Earp and the Old West and stuff. I'm not. Um, I'm really into like how people settled in the area and you know Civil War and things like that. So this is Pirates on the Chesapeake being a true history of pirates, pickaroons, I don't even know what those are, and raiders on Chesapeake Bay 1610 to 1807 by Donald G. Chomet. I need to figure out what a picaroon is. Picaroons? I have no idea. Description below. I hope it's not a racist term. <laughs> because if it is, I'm gonna have to cut this out. Um, so yeah, I have a lot of reading to do about <laughs> pirates on the Chesapeake. Then, uh, this is Takedown by Jeff Buck, a small town cops battle against the Hells Angels and the nation's biggest drug gang. Cop book. Had to have it. Um, all three for a dollar. If this book sucks and I burn it on my grill, it's still worth a dollar. Still worth a dollar. So, couldn't say no to any of these, right? Moving on. <laughs> and I totally forgot to show this one. This is also a crafty book that I got at the yarn shop. Um, 51 Yarns to Spin Before You Cast Off by J.C. Boggs Faulkner, who is over at Yarn Social in KC. Uh, she does Ply, Ply Magazine. So I got this because I have spinning wheels, right? Multiple spinning wheels. And I feel like I do the same thing all the time and I'm going to try to spin maybe not all of them because I know there's going to be some yarns that I totally do not care about. I will never make a boucle just because I have no desire to do a boucle at all. Um, and I may or may not do silks and cottons just because I know I don't like those materials. But there's a lot of stuff that I can do fractal, okay? One's fractal. Another one, core spun. Okay, maybe I'll do a core spun. Um, let's see. Low twist singles. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a challenge. Uh, tail spinning. I don't even know what that is. I don't even know what that is, but there's all kinds of stuff. True worsted, semi woolen, true woolen. There's all kinds, down wool, long wool, fine wool. So there's all kinds of stuff that I can try my hand at. Um, and I will be updating you as I progress through this. Um, yeah, because we've got all winter long to spin 51 yarns before I cast off, which hopefully is no time soon. If it is, it better be after I finish that book. <laughs> I 
I've got to finish the yarns before I cast off. That's what it said. And if I die before that, I'm going to go to heaven and be like, Jesus, the book said <laughs> before I cast off, I was not done. <laughs> I don't think it's how that works, but if it is, good for me. Okay. Um, backing up again, because I cannot get my shit straight. Uh, back to Third Eye Comics. I did get these little puppies. Little golden books. Ghostbusters. And He-Man. Little golden books. Little golden books. Because they're adorable as hell. Um, because someday I'll have a child. Um, maybe at this rate, who knows? Uh, but yeah, I had to have these. At the very least, my little nieces and nephews can, like, totally read about He-Man in a little golden book. And that thrills me. I mean, come on. Come on. Beast Man. Uh, Skeletor. Help me out. <laughs> Battle Cat. That's it. Battle Cat. I was like, oh, I did. I know this one. Yeah. So all this. All the fun. If you're an 80s child, you appreciate this book. Also, how can you not love the Ghostbusters? The only thing that I would like to see is the female Ghostbusters version. Just saying, because that was a good movie, I thought. I thought so. I'm just saying. Um... Do they have, look, they've got the, they got the Gozer puppies. I can't remember what they're called. They got the Gozer puppies in them. So cute. Anyway, so I got those two at Third Eye Comics in Annapolis and I love them. Love them. And then I come down to my last three objects. Okay. Um, I got these two at Books a Million, I think so, yes. I want to say Books a Million. In Arundel Mills Mall in Glen, well it's not Glen Burnie, or is it? I can't remember. It's Arundel Mills. Another Indiana Jones book for the collection because I have all the Indiana Jones books to my knowledge. Uh, so yeah, added another one. And then... Okay, I have a buddy who swears up and down, up and down, that I will love The Witcher because it's just like Game of Thrones. And I'm like, I don't believe you. But come to find out, they're books. They started as books and then they went to the, the uh, video game. So I'm going to read it and I'm going to see what happens. At the very least, this is going to get mailed to him with a very nasty letter that's going to say, you're an idiot. I fucking hate this. Enjoy. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've been looking for this book for a while. Can't find it. Because I'm in Kansas. And... Yeah, so I found it and I was thrilled and I have to start it. And now that I've podcasted this, I can actually start the book. Yay. Uh, but I'm really thrilled about that one. Because Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones. I didn't know that they had new ones coming out. Uh, this one is from, I don't know what year. Let's look, shall we? 2009 so it's been out a while I am behind the times I am behind the times people so yeah thrilled about that I doubt it and then my last object my last object is the coolest object <laughs> well it's not the coolest coolest but I see it and it makes me happy um 
Oh, that's where I got it. Okay, so I go to a place that's called J.O. Spice in Maryland where I get my supply of crab seasoning. I know that sounds crazy, but they make a blend that's perfect for everything. And if you're from Maryland, you put J.O. slash Old Bay on everything. Popcorn, pizza, pretzels, chicken, pork chops, crabs, shrimp, uh, vegetables. You put it on everything, okay? You just do. It's part of your DNA at this point. Um, and while I was there, not only did I get my spices, but I got me a crabby bag. Okay, and then remember the yarn, okay? Remember the crabby blue yarn? When I say it's not a true crabby blue yarn, I mean it. Okay? So yeah, he's not blue blue. But I like a fakey blue blue crab. So mm, we'll deal. Look how cute he is. Mm. This is your dinner before it's your dinner. <laughs> They're so cute. And it's a pretty big bag. It's pretty sizable. Um, I have no idea what I'm going to put in it. I don't really care. But it's pretty big. Pretty big bag. Um, so yeah. So that is it for all this cool stuff that I got in Maryland. Um, I will leave you now with a video of a couple videos of my walk through Calvert Cliffs. Uh, it's a really cool hike that you can take. Uh, it's two miles in through wooded Zen area. You do the woods, then you hit a, like a marshlands, like wetlands, then you hit the beach. And I'm going to throw all three of those, two, three videos of those up for your enjoyment at the end of the video because you're just gonna love it and if that doesn't seal the deal for you guys to go to Maryland I don't know what will so anyway until next podcast I will see you guys later have a very good time until that time and be safe and I will see you guys later wetlands looks like for anybody who's never seen it beautiful so as you exit the trail you're going to buy a bunch of kids. No, I'm kidding. So, it's all trees. And wonderfulness. And then, all of a sudden, you get the ocean. Which is crazy beautiful right now. So yeah, it's like beauty upon beauty upon beauty. And y'all wonder why I hate Kansas. Just saying. <laughs>